between Prince Harry and the press is centred around this moment, at the moment, from his new Netflix documentary, Heart of Invictus. Three young British soldiers, all wrapped in plastic and their bodies in pieces. I saw what only people had talked about. That was the real trigger for I'm now seeing the real cost of war. Stepping foot off the plane, I was angry that this has happened to these guys. I was angry that the media weren't covering it. Well, in response to that accusation that the media weren't covering it at the time, The Sun published this front page today stating, quote, we did care, Harry, and we still do, citing its extensive support for the forces over the years. Now, the question, of course, is who the public backs in this latest skirmish between the prince and the press, or are we all just fed up with the fighting? Well, to debate this, I'm joined by the author and historian Tessa Dunlop, the former royal and former defence editor at The Sun, Duncan Larkham, plus the former head of royal protection, Di Davis. Three of you, thank you for joining me. Tess, I'll come to you first, because... Is there any part of you that can understand why the press, the British media, have got so up in arms about that one sentence in this Netflix documentary about the press not caring? I mean, the press need clicks, they need oxygen. Um, it's so obvious why they've gone for that one line. I can understand why they've sort of... There's a lot of umbrage going on, because it's true. Actually, for over 100 years, our tabloid press have been very good at campaigning, particularly for British soldiers. And the Help for Heroes campaign, that muscle, that, that tabloid muscle, I think shouldn't be underestimated. But at the same time, Harry's reality in that moment, and if you look back, because I did check back uh, to 2015, the time he's taken off, he's an angry young chap at the time because his story had been leaked in, in the American press, not fair enough, the British press. And so he is brought back to Britain and all the headlines in that moment, around that time, were about Harry, not about those critically injured soldiers in the same aeroplane. So it, there are two truths in this story. Let's bring in Duncan on that, responding to Tessa's point then, that the focus at the time really was on Harry and not on the soldiers. Yes, it was. But in that plane was a guy called Ben McBean, who was a double amputee. That's one of the wounded soldiers Harry was talking about. And... He worked with the Sun for years after that. Um, we, we paid him a lot of got involved with him and we, we helped um, draw attention to wounded soldiers. So Harry's just, uh, he's just once again taking a shot at the press and basing it on lies. Frankly, yeah, I don't go on, Tessa. I think. Well, I just think lies to, to barrel that accusation is is unhelpful. I think we can step back and say that was one line, Duncan, in a five-part series, which I think generally has seen people come in behind it. The consensus is this is an impressive series. Indeed, it's an important series at the moment. Let's bring in Di. Sorry, Duncan, I will come back to you, but Di, former head of Royal Protection, uh, there's no sort of big surprise to anyone that Harry doesn't like the media. He's been waging legal complaints against them and, you know, a battle of his own against them. So does this come as any surprise to you? No, it doesn't come as any surprise. Uh, surprisingly, I agree with a great deal that Tessa Dunlop has said. Uh, sometimes I don't always agree, but on this <laughs> occasion, I, I do. However, there is the truth and then there's Harry truth. And I think that's been demonstrated many, many times now uh, over the last few years. He has his truth and I've no doubt he believes it. But I think, uh, with great respect, he's been to the same school of advice as his uncle Andrew. In other words, not very good. And I, I think we should concentrate more on these injured people. He's getting all the publicity. We should really be concentrating on these amputees and these poor men and women who have suffered. They're the key things. And I think, Harry, with great respect, you should stand to one side and emphasise more the fact that you are helping them, but so are many, many others, including the press. Di, have you watched The Heart and Vixus? I know it's five parts and you've probably got a busy life, but have you tuned into it at all? No, in fairness, I haven't. I've just heard all day and I've been commenting like you probably all day. I've just done a six and a half hour journey from North Wales down to here to speak to you guys. So no, I haven't had the chance. I will, out of professional curiosity, and the ability to speak honestly and sincerely. But uh, with great respect, let's concentrate on those men and women who have been injured. They suffered far more than Harry ever has, right, in my but, humble but opinion. But, Di, with great respect, 
the series in balance is 90% the injured veterans of war and about 10% the Duke of Sussex with a flash in the pan couple of moments, including the Duchess. I actually think what's impressive about the series is the balance. It's Harry Light, just enough of the magic royal fairy dust. And where the, the imbalance, if you like, has come in is the press coverage off the back of the series. Duncan, I want to bring you uh, back in on this because one of the points that The Sun has actually raised, um, which they're calling uh, one of Harry's lies on this, is that at the Millie's Award Ceremony in 2011, Harry attended, gave a keynote speech and thanks all of those involved in laying on the marvellous evening. This is a campaign backing Help for Heroes, which The Sun helped launch. Uh, is that the main point of contention here? I was there tonight and I was involved when I was defence editor uh, in organising the entire event. For Harry to say that the plight of British soldiers wounded in Afghanistan was ignored by the press, I'm sorry, it's offensive. It's, it's not true. And when what, what do we do? We have to call out a prince who is telling lie after lie after lie. Well, Tessa, what does that... Uh, how does that impact public okay. sympathies towards Harry? I totally understand that Duncan, as a former tabloid editor, feels passionate about the good that tabloids do, because often we talk about the bad they do, including Harry and that narrative, incidentally. However, to accuse him of telling lie after lie is over-egging the pudding. Yes, he said in that moment he felt the attention was on him, why wasn't it on the maimed victims of war? But actually, his whole series is on the pity of war, and I think it's beautifully constructed, and it's not full of Harry lies. So lot, let's not pile on the inaccuracies and double down on them. Let's stand back and say that was one line, one emotive line from Harry. But otherwise, I think the series at this time, when there's a bit, a bit of a wobble going on behind the, the Ukraine campaign, it's a force for the good. Go, go on, so let's let one lie go. That doesn't matter. The fact is, he uses his platform these days to distort and to give a false account of what is the reality. And we're getting the public again. The Invictus game, incredible thing Harry has done. And he deserves a lot of credit for it. But when he goes and tells lies, yeah. tells lies about his family, tells lies about the British soldier press, it's not acceptable. It's fake news. Duncan, your um, line is slightly breaking up, so I didn't mean to break in you totally there. Hopefully it'll re-establish. I want to go to Di in the meantime and just ask that idea of the public sympathy side of this. Are they seeing more about the Invictus Games and the soldiers? This is rehabilitating Harry's image, this documentary, or is it a PR backfire? Well, I don't know, is the honest truth, because uh, I haven't seen it. So I, I will, as it were, stand judgment. But uh, reading some of the comments I have on various uh, social media... About 6,000 to one really don't support him, which is sad. Um, in respect to what uh, Tessa said, perhaps if he'd put two or three percent in about himself other than the 10 percent. But I do say he's a grown man now, he's 40. Yes, he's experienced things, but so have so many. And to keep harping on about it with great respect, I don't think he does himself justice. And indeed, I agree with Duncan that some of the things he has said. Uh, even about his brother on this occasion, as I understand it, uh, isn't true. He was supported and arguably has had more support than most people. You think about a squaddy that was brought up in a council estate and had two legs blown off and a thing. How much support other than from the help of the heroes and indeed the military? And I think it's decrying. I, I know a lot of military officers and men and, and, and they're absolutely horrified. So they tell me Tessa, uh, in the short period we've had uh, about what he's coming out with. All I They're would say is supported. I've often heard Harry tell his story and it's never elicited a tear. I've never cried for Harry. I was flying back yesterday from Romania and I watched two episodes back to back and the man said, are you all right, love? Tears pouring down my cheeks because the stories in that Heart of Invicta series are so moving. Nothing to do with Prince Harry. So I would beseech both you and Duncan to please watch it first and comment second. And I think we found a replacement for Stacey Dooley. Or perhaps a partner for... I mean, he's quite brilliant. He's very congenial, he's very warm. This is Harry as best. Even the Times newspaper said that. I, I really beseech you to watch it. Duncan, Di, that's your viewing for this evening, sorted according to Tessa I've Dunlop. I've watched it twice, Tessa, <laughs> 
Sorry, Duncan, your line isn't as clear as... He's watched it, it twice. You've watched it I twice. How have you had time to watch a five-part yeah. series twice? That's yes. Everett. Don't I think honest. somebody has gone yes. there, but I, I, yeah, I always look. respect... Well, uh, Tessa, I always respect. I always respect what you say, and I certainly will take up the offer uh, once I've had a cup of tea. You I go. Can. You go. Put the kettle on, Di. Duncan, <laughs> Di, and Tessa. Thank you very much.